What's up, divas? What's up, divas? What's up, divos? What's up, everybody? Welcome back to my channel. Y'all already know what time it is. It is Real Talk Wednesday with your girl. So I hope you all had like a really amazing weekend. Start off the week, fresh Monday. I hope you all are having like an amazing day whenever you're watching this. It's your girl, A, and we are back to talk shit today. Okay? So first of all, let me just get a little sip of my water here. So if you guys do end up hearing some type of noise or banging, they are actually fixing the carpeting in my house where the AC leaked. I did tell you guys that before. So if you hear a little banging, I do apologize ahead of time. Um, my kitchen is finally finished. I'm so excited about that. You guys remember when I told y'all, girl, it felt like it was like six weeks. I'm not lying. It was like six weeks, probably more than that. But the finish touches, the finished sink looks really, really nice. Um, I got a brand new sink, which I was so happy about because the first one that I had, you know, mind you, I've lived in this house for like 11 years not like half july made 11 years for me living in this house so the sink when i first moved here was this porcelain white sink and it was like a double sink i loved it very deep sink but i've never seen a porcelain white sink so you know what i'm saying when you try to wash it or whatever everything gets like stained to it and you got to like go real hard in it so i'm glad that i got a new sink i got one of those steam stainless steel big square sinks really really nice um it's not a double it has one drain on it but it's huge and it has like one of those like the little great thing the gated things you can roll on top of either way girl i really like it i like the new the faucet i love the new countertops like okay they did they think now what else can i get that's brand new okay like i'm glad that that's finally finished and the laundry room is getting finished today they are painting it right now so it's basically all done the leak wasn't as bad as they thought which is great but it just took some time to get finished and y'all already know how i feel about like i don't really like people in and out of my house but either way it's done if y'all hear the banging i do apologize so first of all, let's just start off with last week. I want to tell everybody thank you for all of your words of encouragement and just sticking by my side for since day one of this YouTube journey for over 17 years. Now, mind you, the young lady who reached out to me and basically was trying to, I don't know what you want to call it, give me the business, read me or whatever, or just tell me that I'm not kept up or whatever. You know, some people just be so miserable in their lives. Like when I tell you some people be literally miserable, they just be like so miserable. And I think like a lot of times when people are just so miserable they just want everybody else to feel that way and it's like you know saying birds of a feather flock together misery love company miserable people do really love company but there's sometimes when I really don't allow people to get to me, but then there's a there's times when it's like, you know what, enough is enough. Let me just tell you about yourself because the things that you're worried about is really not even important to me. It's not really relevant to me. Like I don't really care about all of these things that you're mentioning. And then when you get like a certain age, it's like, girl, listen, I am fine as long as I wake up every day and I'm clean, bathed, and I take care of myself and all of that like superficial shit that you know what I'm saying, vain shit. I'm not really worried about it. You know what I'm saying? I'm not worried about going outside with my hair done up, laced up all the time, wearing a wig, being dressed to the gods. Nobody's worried about that stuff the economy is bad people are just trying to make it by pay their bills and live and me personally i'm very happy with my life and i'm very happy in my life you know what i'm saying there are some things that i wish that could be done differently you know what i mean but it is what it is god makes a purpose for everybody everybody have a purpose to be here so i just felt like that person was just like overly miserable and like what do you really got going on in your life you ever notice that when people really try to pick at you or say some smart shit to you or about you they are the main ones that really don't have much going on for themselves they just miserable and that's okay be miserable but really don't try to bring me with you because i'm the last person the last of the people you want to bring down with you in your misery your misery life journey your misery story your miserable life in general i'm the last person okay and it is what it is period okay now moving right along let me tell y'all so last monday after i was done with real talk tati um had promised that she would wash my hair for me now mind you nobody has washed my hair for me in over 11 12 years now before i moved here i always would go to this woman in new york named francis and you know i did move upstate new york i moved to schenectady you know you, i moved to schenectady new york after i left utica after i left the domestic violence shelter i did move to schenectady new york which was closer to new york city because i didn't want to be that far from home so i i was always going to this lady named francis she did have a salon with this other woman but they closed it down and she started working out of her house now she is a dominican she had my hair flourishing growing thick it was absolutely beautiful now ever since i moved here i haven't found anyone that could take her spot you know what i mean so i've just been washing my own hair and when i wash my hair you know i get in the shower and i wash it and it's not like i'm rushing but it is kind of like i'm rushing like i just wanted to be over with okay so when tati washed my hair on monday we, we she did it in the new sink okay 
and it just felt so good it just reminded me so much of being at the salon and just it just felt really really good like it was like an amazing experience but the products that she used made my hair feel so curly it was it made my hair super duper curly when i tell you the shrinkage was so real this time like normally when i wash my hair it does shrink okay but it doesn't shrink that much when she washed it girl it shrunk so damn much it looked like i had cut my hair all over again and it felt so good. It was just so, so curly and so bouncy. So I'm still like, you know, I have brushed it down into a ponytail and I really didn't want to let the curls go. But yeah, I've been, you know, maintaining it, maintaining it weekly. So I'm not weekly, excuse me, daily. But I'm really loving the fact that somebody else washed my hair. You ever go and you get your hair washed versus your own stuff and you can feel the difference in the way they're rubbing your scalp and shit. Oh my God, girl, it felt so good. I felt like I was back at Francis's house again. So I was like, okay. Okay, so I'll be back in two weeks. I'll be back downstairs waiting in two weeks for the hair um, the hair treatments. But she did my hair so nice. She put treatment oil in it. She put a hair mask in it. Girl, I would have just shampooed and conditioned it and got out the shower. Like, girl, I don't really want to do all of that. Like, my wash day is quick, okay? But my wash day is not as good as her wash day. Like, her wash day, you can definitely tell the difference. So hopefully my hair will grow back in time. It is getting lengthy, but I just needed to get full. Like, super duper full. Now, also, you guys, y'all know I be trying to watch different shows because the same same shit I will watch over and over and over so I'm really trying to get out there put myself out there when it comes to different shows you know I will definitely give them a chance I'm I'm at the current time I'm watching BMF which is available on Amazon which is available on stars excuse me but let me tell y'all so I, I laid in the bed the other night and I was about to do my new my coloring I got me a new coloring book girl I was ready I was ready to go because I've been playing this game this game that pops up on my phone called peak and it's like a match game you gotta pop all these things girl i've been addicted to that i've been playing this game for five days and i'm up and i'm up to 187th 187th level so i'm really really feeling this game i'm loving it i would definitely post it in this video if i remember to do so so that way y'all could get addicted to it too now mind you i really don't try to be spending no money on these apps when it comes to games but sometimes you definitely have to okay so i just want to put that out there but in the midst of all that i was like let me just go ahead and put this game down and get some of my coloring because i got me a new coloring book though I didn't need it I just wanted it I got me a new coloring book from Amazon y'all see I love Amazon what I tell y'all Amazon Prime get your shit on time so you definitely want to check out that wig sale but so when I when I went on Amazon you know I was on Amazon Prime I was about to watch one of the shows that I always watch which is Forensic Files I wasn't even going to watch BMF I was going to watch Forensic Files I love it it's been on for years it's like one of my favorites I don't know how many times I've seen each episode but girl I will put that show on and go to sleep to it like literally because it's one of those shows where I really don't have to see it I can listen and i can hear it so girl when i go to sleep that's what i put on i don't really know why i don't know why i want to hear that when i'm going to sleep but it's very interesting and i can listen to it without watching it so anyway so i'm sitting there i was about to put that on and one of the movies popped up on the screen on amazon and the name of the movie is the american side the american society of magical negroes okay like what i was like what the fuck american negroes the a magical the american society of magical negroes when i seen that i was like what the f is this about now i got dave and alec Greer in it okay David Allen Greer and so when he began the movie I, I really did think it was about something something like that and in the beginning it was just basically showing um you had to be picked for the movie like excuse me you had to be picked to be in part of this society because it was like you know it's not known these are magical negroes so this one dude he was picked for the move um, for the society <clears throat> and David Allen Greer brought him in he was actually an artist and he got picked by David Allen Greer to be part of this underground unknown society of magical negroes Negroes. So basically what this movie entailed was us magical Negroes who basically try to keep white people calm because if they ain't calm, then they do things and they become dangerous. He's like, what is the most dangerous animal in the world? And it is white people from what was stayed in the movie and the reason for that is because when they become uncomfortable then situations become uncomfortable and situations become dangerous so we as the magical negroes or black people try our due diligence to keep them calm because any uncomfortable situation that they may be in can be pointed towards us and can make that situation dangerous girl i really took all of that from the beginning of it because that's what it was displayed but as i watched the movie further on it was like some dumbass love story like i felt like did i just waste 
50 minutes of my fucking time watching this lame ass movie like you ever start watching something and you feel like it's really about something and then you like halfway through the movie and it's like should i stick it out or should i just not girl i really tried to sit there and stick it out but i just couldn't i just was like you know what let me get the fuck off of this movie and go watch forensic files but i'm just telling y'all if y'all want to check it out maybe y'all got something different from it maybe you've seen it and you could tell me what you feel about it but yeah it was not what I thought it was, okay? And what I did think it was, was like some real, real shit. Like, like something real. Like, I knew we weren't magical, but we are magical. But, you know, I thought it was just like a, um, exaggeration on the word magical for the title of the movie. And um, I really did think like in the movie, we were going to show what we as black people do for those who are non-black to escalate them or to uh, to let excuse me for those who are non-black to elevate them and to get them to to, to their successful part of life and that's what it kind of like displayed in the beginning how we as a black person were helping others that were non-black in gaining success okay and this is what i took from it but in reality it was really not that you know what I'm saying? So anyway, either here nor there, girl, listen, I just felt like I had wasted like 50 minutes of my life. Like, and I just couldn't get it back. Like literally, I just could not get it back. But anyway, other than that, so today is my lunch date with Tati and we're actually going to be going to Target first because Target has like amazing perfumes that I didn't even know they had. Found it on a TikTok video. And I think it's like their own brand. From what I noticed in the video was they were like $12.95. They're like these nice little bottles and they look really chic. And affordable and i've heard well i've seen good reviews on tiktok about them but girl where are they located at because i never knew that target sold perfume however i've never looked for perfume at target either so it probably could have been sitting here all along and i just never noticed it but if you guys have ever purchased any perfume from target leave your comments in the um the leave your comments down below because i'm really interested in knowing has anyone ever tried these perfumes from Target? And if so, what do you guys think about? But also after we leave Target, we're gonna go out to eat like at a seafood restaurant. I'm not really sure if it's a seafood buffet. I can't remember, but Tati did find this. I think she found this either word of mouth or on TikTok. So we're gonna check it out. It's probably like a 20 minute drive from the house. First we was gonna go eat and then go to Target. But girl, listen, let me tell you something. I don't like to go nowhere but home after I eat because I'll be stuffed, my stomach be hurt, gotta be close to the bathroom if need be. And I just be feeling uncomfortable so we're gonna go to target first which is better and then we'll go eat after that and go home i really wish the damn place was around the corner because after i like to eat i really do like to be at home like asap okay it's just because my stomach be hurting and i'll be feeling like i try not to eat to where i'm overly full like i don't like to eat to where i'm so stuffed and my stomach is hurting because i feel like when you eat to where your stomach is hurting it's a very uncomfortable feeling like and i'm not really up for all of that so and i definitely don't want to be moving around but yeah we're gonna go on a lunch date today and i'm excited about that you know saying get out the house it is winding down with the temperature you know school started mumsy then texted me the link to her gown cap and gown they are doing the measurements and ordering for the cap and gowns this month and i'm like god damn it seemed like time go by so quick because i really cannot believe that my baby baby is graduating from high school this year like she's graduated that, that that's crazy like time has gone by so quick she's 17 years old already time has gone like nobody's business it just doesn't feel like 17 years and to know that she's graduating from high school in a, in, in may is like wow i have actually gotten all of my kids finished in school and what what else what else is there to do what else is there what's what's next you know what i'm saying i got six grandkids like what is what else is there to do like i i mean what am i supposed to travel the world because my plans when my daughter graduated from high school was to get me an rv and travel to the united states for like a year and live in an rv but i don't really think i want to do that anymore because for one i don't want to do that by myself and for two i just i don't know people be making me nervous with their driving so that dream that i had is kind of like vanished i just really need to find something to do with my time i do want to go on like a really nice family trip somewhere with my whole entire family you know what i'm saying so maybe that's what i plan once she graduates but i'm just really happy for her and i just know that damn time has really like went by so quick and like all of my kids are like grown up now and i'm like wow i'm, I'm but i am happy that they're still at home because i love the company and i wouldn't want to be here by myself i always have my dog but you know what i'm saying i love the fact that i have my daughters here with me and my grand my two grandkids because it just feels homely homey to me 
And also, I just need people to be around me. I don't know about a lot of people be really happy to get their kids out the house. But I'm not one of those, like, as long as you're being respectable, then stay here. You know what I'm saying? Stay here as long as you're being respectable. But other than that, my weekend was great. I did end up editing a video, which was my new vlog that I'll be publishing out probably Thursday. So make sure y'all check that out. Um, and other than that, I just, you know, basically I chill. Sunday we watch. Okay, I don't know about y'all, but I love... Hold hold on guys i hate when i'm about to say something okay so sunday you know i just be trying to wind down and um my new favorite one of my new favorite ratchet shows came back on which is um they came back on which is jocelyn's cabaret now y'all know i love to watch zeus network i like watching the baddies and i love i love watching jocelyn on hernandez on her cabaret show i like i tell you i love drama channels i love ratch ratchetness i love the drama but as long as it ain't with me i like to watch it on tv not in person okay not in person but i did watch that i watched baddies i watched jocelyn hernandez cabaret and you know we had some pizza from brothers pizza which is down the Block. they're from new york okay they're from new york city there and so that's just a piece of home like when i get their pizza it's a piece of home and it tastes so good we got some chicken wings from the wing stop because i don't fuck with brothers pizzas chicken wings because they be overcooking them too much but you know good old greasy new york style pizza girl yes that's what i did on sunday and now here i am it's monday i'm gonna get this video done and we are going to get this real talk done and then i'm gonna go on my lunch date so let's get into this if you have a real talk that you need me to talk about you can go ahead and send me an email to muffin is my lovers 2012 at gmail.com or you can also send it to my april's real talk at gmail.com please make sure to put in the subject line real talk so that way i know when i'm looking it up that it is a real talk if you choose to decide to change the names of the people that you're talking about referring to in the email go ahead and let me know that you've changed the names already and if you don't want to change the names then that's fine too you can also mention that so on that note let's just get into this real talk girl So this one she titled it for me real talk my womanhood will be taken now when i read this last week it really really touched home for me and i definitely had to do like a little bit of research because yeah true indeed i also went through this but there are other levels to this actual um, surgery that you get done so and i wanted to make sure that i wasn't leaving anything out or just going off of my own feelings you know what i'm saying so let's just go ahead hi april my name is audrey i will be turning 39 before this year ends i am a single mother of three amazing children all by the same man if that matters my husband and I are divorced my husband and I divorced some years ago we just grew apart I guess he became more interested in the woman at his job which is fine at least I figured it out before it was too late right anywho this isn't about he and I but about me I had been diagnosed with endometriosis a couple years back and because of that I was put on medication which isn't working for me the pain is excruciating, just painful. The only way I can describe it is feeling like you're in labor for days. Well, I've been living with this pain for too long, and I have been advised to have a hysterectomy, the removal of my uterus and ovaries. April, I am so nervous, almost on the verge of being scared. I will be left with less of my woman parts, no longer able to have children, not that I want anymore. I remember you having a full hysterectomy some years back, and I wanted to know how did it make you feel? Did you feel less of a woman? Did you get hot flashes? And if so, how often? Did you go into pre-menopause or menopause? What's the difference? It just feels like a curse. I'm afraid of all the things that will happen to me that I have heard women go through, talk about, and complain about. How do you deal with it? To, how do you deal with it to this day? I will be honest. I am not looking forward to any of this, which will all happen in the next couple of months. 
I hear so many fixed feelings and scary tales of menopause. We as women have to go through so many bodily changes. No wonder we are so strong and determined. Have you ever felt so nervous in your life of anything? I had never had surgery. I wouldn't count a root canal as a major surgery. I will be going through. I will be going through with it. I have already completed my paperwork for the surgery and have been approved by my insurance. I'm just nervous, like I said, on the verge of being scared, and I don't scare easy. Any advice or tips you have, I would greatly appreciate. Thank you so much, Diva Audrey. So as you guys see here, Audrey is going through life changes. She is going to be getting a hysterectomy for the removal of her uterus. And what did she say? Ovaries. Okay. So for the removal of her uterus and ovaries. Okay. Now I did take some notes and look up some information because each person is different. Just because she had one thing doesn't mean that everybody else or nobody else will have these things now mind you i got a hysterectomy in november of 2018 okay and i did suffer with endometriosis for a couple of years as well before i even got this damn surgery before i even got the hysterectomy i did have a what is called an ablation and like i said i did take notes or i did yeah i did take notes because I need everybody to know what I went through. So I did go through what is called an endometrial ablation. And it is a, which is an invasive surgery procedure that destroys the lining of the uterus to treat heavy menstrual bleeding. So that is what I actually had to go through before I even had the hysterectomy. I just really had bad bleeding, like overly bad bleeding. Like I know it's a TMI, but we're all women here. And you know, when I was going through these, these motions or this, this process of bleeding when it was my monthly, it wouldn't bother me like i never got cramps i never had like menstrual cramps maybe when i first started my period when i was like 14 but as i got older i never had any type of cramps so i was never uncomfortable you know what i'm saying but the only part that made me uncomfortable was the part where it was bleeding so you know i would have to constantly change constantly change like my pad on my tampon like all the time i couldn't wear just a tampon by itself it had to be a pad along with it because of the bleeding and so when i did let my doctor know about this i ended up getting an ablation which was just burning like more or less i I kind of would think it's kind of like a DNC, like they scrape the uterus walls and they said it would help. But honestly, like I wouldn't really be advising people to get one of those because it just made everything worse for me. That's when the bad endometriosis cramps came. Like when she said, when Audrey said, it feels like you have labor pains. It does feel like when you have your period and you have endometriosis, it feels like you are having contractions. Okay. It feels like you are literally having a baby, but you're not having a baby. Like I would lay in my bed for like three to four days balled up in like a fetal position because it hurts so bad and when i would try to get up and walk it would make me feel like i wanted to pass out you know what i'm saying i would be in literal tears and wouldn't be able to do anything like certain times of the month and the medication i was given did not help at all not anything the only thing that i did find that helped me was i did have like some percocets left from like a tooth removal and i had to take those and it kind of like relieved the pain for the day when i tell you that endometriosis will have you balled up and it does feel like contractions it's the worst feeling ever for a woman so i never forget one time when i was away i was in schenectady new york and i was visiting with my ex-husband you know how i would leave for like a, a couple of weeks and it just so happened the day before i was supposed to get on the airplane to come back out here to arizona that's when my period came and i already knew already knew that as soon as the next day hit i was going to be in like severe pain so i ended up having to push my flight back like a day but when i did get to the actual airport they had to wheel me to the plane because i was in like the worst pain ever so it's very painful and it's something that is like unbearable at times now for me when i did go to um when, when i did go for my surgery i was already told beforehand that they will be moving my uterus and my ovaries too. That's what was told to me by my doctor. And I do believe um, my cervix. Um, so I had my cervix and my cervix, my uterus and um, my, cer my cervix, my uterus and my fallopian tubes were mo removed. Basically when I woke up, I had nothing, okay? A total hysterectomy is when they remove the uterus and the cervix. 
a total hysterectomy with salpingo, I don't know how to say it, is when they remove the uterus and either one or both ovaries and fallopian tubes. A radical hysterectomy is removes of the uterus, the cervix, both ovaries, both fallopian tubes, and nearby tissue. And that's what I had. I had a radical hysterectomy. Now, mind you, when I went into surgery, that's not what I was supposed to get. I was supposed to have the one where they just removed the uterus and the cervix. Well, when I woke up, I woke up with one of those fucking patches. Like, it looks like a, a non-smoker's patch. Like, when you're trying to quit smoking, I woke up with one of those on, you know. I went to sleep super fast. When I went into the surgery, the lady was talking to me, and I was like, no, I'm not tired. And then next thing you know, when I woke up, I, I didn't even remember going to sleep. But when I woke up, you know what I'm saying, I didn't have anything. Like, when I say I didn't have anything, they removed every fucking thing. And I, I did know that before I went to sleep, I was going to have one fallopian tube left and like all the other shit. You know what I'm saying? I was just going to get rid of the uterus and the cervix. Girl, no. When I woke up, the doctor had to come in. He had to explain to me that he had to take everything from me because within a year time, if I would not have been, um, excuse me, if I would have not allowed him or if he would not have taken everything i would have had cervical cancer so the one thing that was i was left with would have been cervix i was going to be remove the uterus and the ovaries but i was going to be left with my cervix and my fallopian tubes but because of the lining he said that the lining my uterus lining was so scarred that he had to remove everything because within a year i would have had cervical cancer so that is the reason why i had everything removed now as far as being a difference of pre-menopause and menopause girl i don't really know because it seemed like as soon as everything was removed from me within like a week i started getting like these bad hot flashes now mind you i didn't even know they were hot flashes because i didn't know what to expect i just remember hearing women speak about oh they're they having hot flashes girl i didn't, I didn't know what to expect i just know that i would see women turning fans on and turning fans off and they would always complain about like their head being on fire well that's what it felt like it just felt like out of nowhere this is how it would be brought on and when i tell you i would get them so frequently throughout the day it would be so frequently throughout the day these patches that i would were prescribed to me didn't help and on top of that your skin is oily so the patches very rarely stayed on i would have to tape them on i would have to use band-aids like huge gauze band-aids to wrap them around and you had to change these patches like every two to three days so mind you i had to sleep with it and i had to shower with it and they said to put it somewhere where you know it's not so much exposed i tried under my breast i tried on my back my ex-husband will put them on for me on my back but they still would end up slipping off now my back is not as oily as like my arms and my front would be but it was just like a challenge and i still kept wearing these patches and I did try like some herbal natural vitamins or so forth to make me feel better but it just felt like nothing ever worked for me and each person is different now mind you I would go to sleep with like a tank top and a pair of panties on or some shorts and when I would wake up I would be butt ass naked like dead serious because I would have them bad hot flashes in the middle of the night all the time that's the reason why I ended up being put on sleep medication because I never got any sleep I was always drenching in sweat and I just was very very uncomfortable um None of like the things that other women complain about too much ever happened to me except for the bad hot flashes. Now, just recently, I stopped getting the hot flashes. Like when I say just recently, like I want to say like within the last year, I stopped getting the hot flashes. But I also noticed too that when I was stressed out, I was getting them more frequently. And I don't know if that's something that would like, you know, call it on. But I just noticed once my ex left and never came back, they weren't as frequent as they were when he was here. And I'm not trying to blame him for my menopause stages. But when he was here, I was getting them hot flashes very frequently. And then after he left, they kind of like died down. They, they weren't as much. But I will tell you, within the last year, I haven't had any, which is great. Because they can be very, 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 very bothersome. I would walk around with one of those neck fans on because I would just get them. And it feels like your rest of your body is just like cool, but your head, it just feels like steam, steam out of nowhere, just out of nowhere. It doesn't even build up the heat. It just comes just like they say a hot flash and it just feels like really hot steam just from the neck up i would break out and sweat so i would have to wear like a neck fan so i really advise anybody who's going through pre-menopause or menopause to get yourself one of those great neck fans you can get them on amazon they're very affordable and when i tell you they did work it did work for me that neck fan came in handy when i tell you i would wear that shit all the time and just press the power button i made sure that it was charged and i made sure that i had that shit on wherever i went when i was in the house 
I stayed wearing it. Now, as far as other things like Audrey asked me about, like for one, when they take your fallopian tubes, you know, when you get a hysterectomy, it doesn't matter which stage of hysterectomy that you get. There is never going to be a period anymore. But I will say this. I'm not really sure which one you went for, like which surgery you went for, Audrey, but there are two different types of um, hysterectomy surgeries there is the robotic one where the doctor is just controlling the robot's hands from behind a glass window off the computer and these robotic ones will make very tiny tiny incisions in your abdomen and be able to remove it the robotically the only difference from that one versus the old school way is where a doctor does it by their own self is a robotic hand cannot have touch it does excuse me a robotic hand doesn't have senses to feel to touch you understand what i'm saying as opposed to a doctor they have senses where they can feel and they can touch and they know where not to go versus a robotic hand you can also risk the chance of a robotic hand messing up your bladder so that was the reason why i went the old school way because there have been a lot of cases that was told to me by my physician that the robotic hand can accidentally touch the bladder which in return can destroy your can you know give you bladder complications in the long run so i just went the old school way because i just felt like the old school way was just more personal and i just rather a, a person since you can feel the touch i'm gonna need that okay i'm gonna need that so audrey did ask me she said she said She's afraid, she's afraid and she's nervous. When I first was told that I was gonna get a hysterectomy, I was so excited, like straight up, I was so excited because I wasn't gonna have to worry about having no period no more. I wasn't gonna have to worry about going through no pain no more. Girl, I was just excited. I was like, yes, I ain't gotta worry about these things no more. I'm old, I don't need no kids. Not like I'm old, you know what I'm saying? But you know, I was to the point in my life where I don't need no more children. I have five kids though. I did have two miscarriages from my ex-husband prior to this. Like, you know what I'm saying? When Mumsy was like, probably like, three i had lost a baby at like two and a half months and then i lost another one and that was all due to fibroids and the issues that i had with my uterus but i was excited about like you know the upcoming surgery i really was because i just felt like there will be no more pain for me i don't have to worry about hunching over and laying in fetal positions i don't have to worry about this bleeding i was excited you know what i mean like who the fuck is excited about a hysterectomy but when you are in so much pain that's something that you know what i'm saying girl let me just get this over with but when the days got closer i did get nervous and then i I did get scared and I did not want to go. Um, Tati and Tinky was there. They escorted me to the hospital. They stayed with me. They came and visited me. And my son was who came to visit me. God bless him. His soul. Um, but I was scared and I was very nervous. You know, I've never had a surgery before. Like she said, a root canal don't count. And y'all know I got my teeth done. I had root canals. I had root canals upon root canals. That shit don't count. This surgery did make me nervous but i'm here to tell you i can't really tell you don't be scared because each person is different and i'm not your feelings you know what i'm saying but i will tell you that you will be okay and that when you wake up from the surgery you will be all right now i did have to stay in the hospital for like i think i was there for like three to four days because it's like a major surgery and they have to make sure you don't get any blood clots they got to make sure that you can walk still and because i have vein disease i did have to be escorted to walk quite frequently it was like every hour and a half i had to get up and they had to escort me around to walk i had to wear like these big they look like cuffs that they put on and they swell your legs up they look like um blood pressure cuffs but they're for your legs i had to wear those a lot um when i was in the hospital i had to be escorted around like i said to walk because of just bad blood clots in my legs so each person is different when i did come home you know i do have an decision and they say like healing time is six to eight weeks it's a lie like i don't know about for everybody else but yeah your body does heal on the outside but the healing on the inside is not the same like they do have to staple your insides together and kind of like pull them back together and let me tell y'all for like six months six to eight months i could still feel the soreness inside like seriously it felt like a knot and it just was painful like if i was to accidentally hit myself up against the counter or you know it, you can feel the pain but over time of course it did heal now did i feel like less of a woman like audrey asked me did i feel no i didn't i didn't feel like less of a woman you know why because i already had my children and i did what my purpose was i gave birth to my five children and i have grandchildren now so i didn't feel like less of a woman you know what i'm saying like i don't care about certain things like a uterus like that's not going to make me feel less of a woman and even if i was a person that could not 
have children, I still don't feel like I would feel like I was less of a woman. You know what I'm saying? I, I do know that this was helpful to my health, healthy life journey, because like I stated within a year, I could have had cervical cancer as my physician stated. And yeah, I did have to get used to learning how to deal with having hot flashes. Now they have medications for endometriosis. And I did see commercials for that, like strictly for endometriosis. Now I didn't get the strictly for endometriosis medications. They was just giving me like, um, prescribed Tylenol, which is like what code or whatever that shit don't work but um i did have to learn how to work around the hot flashes i honestly did even though the patches were not sticking on i did have to learn other ways to get them to stay on i did try herbal di diets i did try herbal vegetables or excuse me herbal um, vitamins and things like that soy i did try to drink soy milk i did try to use soy pills i tried a lot of different things to make my life situation a lot better for me or a little bit easier there are also these pills by um i'm not really sure but they're by they're called estrovent now they are for strictly menopausal symptoms but there's like probably three different ones i've got loads and loads and loads of boxes of those like estrovent um menopausal medication when i say loads of them i probably have like 30 boxes because my mother you know she has um medicaid and medic medicare and so she gets this thing where she can get like medication every month off for for free okay so she would order them and have them sent to me after a while i definitely was able to stop using them but they didn't work as much as i would have liked them to my life did change a little bit after like the hysterectomy and it did take a lot it did take a, a lot to get used to and it was a journey and honestly it was a journey um as i was told by my doctor i am going to go into menopause early and early age because everything was taken and removed from me um i did have at least like 10 to 15 years left prior to my surgery before menopause kicked in as i was told to by my surgeon my doctor so yeah it is a life-changing experience no i don't feel like less of a woman i'm really happy that i was able to get this done because it's made my life much easier i can't imagine still having a period and suffering with endometriosis for so long it's a excruciating pain and when i tell you it feels like you are contracting it feels like contractions and that is the only way that i can describe it as well as it is stated that your your uterus is contracting when you are in pain with endometriosis it's a it's an excruciating pain and i wouldn't wish that on any woman but you know it does take some getting used to you know you do have to switch around your lifestyle there are a lot of things that i don't or can't do anymore versus like i used to like let me tell y'all the reason why i don't wear wigs all the time is because i can't they end up giving me headaches in the back of my head and this was after my surgery like after like a year after having my hysterectomy within that within that time frame within that year i wasn't able to wear lace front wigs like i used to you know what i'm saying like i would be able to wear them but i wasn't able to sleep in them anymore they made me really hot like overly hot versus what they used to do i used to get bad headaches i get migraines now which i never got before so all of these things do come with menopause symptoms you do get migraines and i never knew what a migraine felt like until i had my hysterectomy and when i tell you I never felt a migraine girl let me tell you a migraine is horrible I mean each person is different but when I get a migraine my vision is blurry and it feels like somebody is punching me in the back of my head and it's always on the left side but my vision gets really really blurry and I'm, I feel like I'm about to pass out but it just constant punching me in the back of the head and I do have medication for that however I don't take it because I've taken it a couple times but it makes you feel weird and it makes you very tired and shaky and I don't like to feel like that especially through medication i like to be in control of my body and my actions so i don't really try to take it but also but also because i do get sleep medication from my doctor it's really not a sleep medication it's more or less for anxiety and uh something else but it will also help with migraines and so forth now i don't have anxiety but it also puts you to sleep so i guess because i'm taking this medication to get rest I haven't had a migraine in like over a year girl and i'm very happy about that like i did get one like recently excuse me i'm lying i had one recently but it wasn't that long probably like about three four months ago but before that i was getting them like 
three to four times a week and a lot of things can cause be, be brought on by stress like what i'm telling y'all when my ex was here i was getting migraines a lot my head was hurting and i was having bad hot flashes and then after he left little by little everything kind of like you know leveled down not so many hot flashes as i first got and i mean it did take time it didn't happen automatically when he decided not to come back it did take months but i realized when i get stressed out or upset or whatever i get hot flashes it brings on the hot flashes so little by little my body has gotten used to it i feel still 100 percent woman i don't have like all of those different sensations that everybody else may complain about but each person is different and your body is different but i will say that the hot flash stage is hard to get used to in the beginning until you really know what to look for but my number one suggestion to you audrey would be to get you one of those neck fans because they will be so helpful so beneficial of anybody who's having hot flashes get you one of those neck fans i'm telling you i promise you it will make a world of difference and once i figured that out with that it was easy peasy from there on for me it was it was a little bit more i was a little bit more in control because all i had to do was switch that little switch on and have the air flow yes so you get used to it and you know i'm, I'm gonna pray for you because i understand what it is to feel like being scared to go into surgery i understand that and that there was a time when i wanted to get my stomach done you know what i'm saying but girl after having that hysterectomy and shit i was not even caring no more like it is what it is and that also let me tell y'all this one last thing when you have a hysterectomy when they remove everything like i had a radical hysterectomy and each person's body is different you know each woman is different however I didn't read in forums that someone were complaining that when they had their hysterectomy now i'm not really sure if they had a radical one if they had one where they just removed the uterus and the um whatever either way a lot of women said when their parts were removed they noticed that some women their 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 torso would go hunched or it would shrink i'm not really sure some women noticed that they got a, a fupa pouch and i did notice that with myself like before i have gained weight several different times okay so this ain't the first time that i've ever gained weight but prior to my surgery i did lose a lot of weight okay and i was chunky then i never had a fupa couple of years prior to that like a few years prior to that before i moved to arizona i had lost drastic weight after having my last child i lost a lot of weight i was like in the 200s back then too and i lost a lot of weight still when i was big never had a fupa and then prior to that so this weight loss journey is not new to me but the fupa definitely is and i think a lot of it was brought on by the actual experience of having a full hysterectomy a radical hysterectomy and everything removed and it says that when you have all of these body parts inside of you removed Move, these are holding up some of your body this these parts like your cervix your uterus fallopian tubes it is holding up some of your body so you will notice that your hips may look a little different over time it's not going to happen instantly but your hips may look a little different your torso may look a little bit different your abdominal area may look a little di bit different and that is what happened with me what that is the reason for my fupa but each person is different i just say it doesn't matter if you end up having a fupa do what's best for you do what's healthy for you because this is a lifelong journey of being healthy and you know sometimes appearances on the outside don't even matter because what's going on inside does so that's all i can tell you but you know audrey i understand how you feel and i'm pretty sure i'm not the only one watching this that's had a hysterectomy but just pray about it and you'll be fine it will take some getting used to you will have to adjust your schedule to certain things you will have to change your clothing i don't really try to wear any type of turtlenecks or anything up on my neck because it used to bring on the hot flashes so you will notice changes and you will have to learn how to work around them but for the most part it's best for you and it's best for your health so I'm saying go for it and just pray. That's all I can tell you. And if anyone else has any tips on hysterectomies that they've been through, go ahead and leave it for Audrey down below because I'm pretty sure she'd like to hear from everyone, not just me. So moving right along, we're going to get to the last one in this real talk, okay? Now this one was called Generation and I really wasn't sure what she meant by that until I had to go ahead and read into further. But hi April, how are you and our fellow divas and divos? I have been following you since day one. You know those bathroom days in New York when you were smoking in that sick smoking on that cigarette giving people hell in your bathroom girl if i can relive those years i truly would when youtube was much easier more original content not everyone trying to compete with one another and people just being more mindful hey april my name is Teresa. i'm a woman of your age born and raised like yourself in new york city april i come to you today because there have been something weighing very heavily 
on my soul. Like I said, I'm a woman of your age and I really cannot understand this new generation of mannerism. Now I know and understand times have changed, but with the changing times, does there have to be so much undecorum, so much ratchetness, so much vulgar language and actions? These young women of today have become so disrespectful towards their own selves, speaking nothing but nastiness about sucking the dick and eating the ass of men. Thinking the way they speak is okay. Not only have I viewed this on TV and YouTube, but just in reality, real life. I am so glad I got away. Got away like yourself from New York City and moved to North Carolina, where it's much slower, more nice, and people are way more friendly. Now, these young women are still doing that same very thing in North Carolina, but it's not so much like you would see in New York City. I moved away over five years ago and never looked back. Things have really changed over the years and things have changed quick. I'm very glad I moved before all of the migrants were allowed into our city because things have gotten out of control in New York with the migrants and gangs. And April, I will be an honest woman and tell you this country is falling apart in my eyes. Just the other day, I was at the grocery store and I heard a young lady speaking so nasty at the mouth with her friends about how she wants the next ninja to eat her you know what her words to be exact april i'm helping to raise my grandkids that is the reason i moved here my eldest son lives here with his wife and children along with my daughter she also has a child i am a mother of two and a grandmother of three april i am not understanding what happened to this generation what happened to the mothers raising their children the proper way teaching them to be responsible and respectful to not others but mainly to themselves these young women seem to be so unhinged, so unruly, and just have no decorum at all. April, when I told you I had to clutch my pearls after hearing the way these young women spoke, I am just to not... Just I am just to not understanding why they chose to speak and behave this way. They have dressed just a little too much for me. From the rap music these women speak on such as That Sexy Red Girl... April, who raps about their behind hole being a certain color and thinking it's a flex is beyond me. So April, my granddaughter came over to stay with me for the weekend. She came with her phone and here at my home, I have a guest room, which is more or less for my grands. I overheard my granddaughter, who is 10, rapping out loud. She had her headphones in, listening to music. I overheard the most toxic words coming out of her mouth and had to intervene and have her remove the headphones and come into the kitchen and help me with dinner. When I spoke to her mother, my daughter-in-law, about what she was listening to, all her mother, my daughter-in-law, could state to me after I spoke to her was, Well, Mama Risa, that is what they are listening to now. It's not like when you was growing up. April, her daughter is 10. My son's daughter is only 10. How is this acceptable for these children? And trying to help raise them and giving your two cents doesn't seem to be working. I, I felt like I wasted my breath with my daughter-in-law and am wondering, should I speak to my son about this? They are a married couple and have two children together, one 10 and the other girl is four. I'm not trying to be a nun, but what I'm seeing is just horrible. These young people are heading towards the wrong thing. How would you handle this with your grandkids? Well, thank you, Teresa. Okay, guys. First of all, my lips are feeling like they dry. I don't know, but for the last couple of days, my lips have been so dry. Or like, my mouth has been so dry, and I'm not really sure why. I haven't. Um, I've been drinking plenty of water. I'm like, what the hell is going on? I think it's the mouthwash that I decided to use. I think it's the damn mouthwash. Because after I gargle at night, too, I notice that my mouth is overly dry. And it's Listerine. And But I, I love the mouthwash, like, literally. But I think it's the actual color one that I bought, which is probably making me feel so dry mouth lately. I've been chewing like crazy gum, okay? So we got Teresa here, who is a grandmother. She is a woman of my age, okay? She got three grandkids, left New York City, moved to North Carolina to help raise her grandkids. She got two kids of her own, both have children. Her son has two with his wife, and then she has her daughter who has one. She didn't really mention her daughter in this. This wasn't about her daughter. It was about more or less her son's children and what her granddaughter was listening to. Now, mind you, yes, times have definitely changed. I'll be the first to tell y'all that. You ever see yourself, like, when you was young, Okay, you, I, as a young person, when I was like in my teens, I would always complain about my mother's always complaining about my music. Like my mom would complain about my music back then and what we wore, you know. And I would just be like, oh, she's nothing but a little old fuddy duddy, or she's just old and she don't know what's hip. You know what I'm saying? That 
that was me back then but now me today is like how the hell are these kids listening to this music like how y'all even listening to this shit because a lot of these female rappers yeah they do talk about some really vulgar shit so Teresa is definitely right about that and Sexy Red like let me just tell y'all this I am not a fan of Sexy Reds and that's okay I'm 50 years old I don't really think I care to learn about anybody's booty hole being pink or brown or whatever color she said it was that's not my concern girl I don't care about your booty hole just like I don't care about anybody else's booty hole and the color that they is or the color that it is but yeah they seem like they rap about like the most vulgar shit like y'all can't find no other words that rhyme with that shit like you can't rhyme with no other words that rhyme with the word pick you you got to talk about sucking somebody's you know what or licking somebody's you know what like yeah one of them that i feel like to me like I, you know what i could be wrong but sukiana is another one she has a vulgar mouth too and i don't, I don't really know like if that's what you true that's what you choose to do in your in your sex life some things you just need to keep to yourself because if i know that you've been going around licking booty holes i'm definitely not going to be close up in your face you might need some listerine okay you might need some listerine girl okay but they are vulgar but sometimes i just feel like my mom when i say these things about the young generation because i remember being that young back then and my mom always coming to me about my taste in music now mind you back then our music wasn't as vulgar as it is today like i'm number one huge fan of salt and pepper queen latifah mc light and i don't remember near one of them rapping about nobody's cootie cat nobody's private part penis and nobody's booty hole i don't remember salt and pepper ever saying anything about that okay what a man what a man i know they didn't say nothing about sucking nothing or licking nothing okay it might have been a little raunchy for those times but girl not for today okay not for today a lot of things have changed in this world and so it's unfortunate we have to learn how to adapt to it but as she stated Teresa did state like you know she's from new york she's glad that she did leave new york before the migrants got there because of all the shit that's going on now listen i'm not a political person but i am going to be voting this year mind you okay some of y'all gonna be like girl what you voting for the first time for the first time in my life okay yes and i felt like let me take this initiative i've already registered and i just feel like yeah my vote will count it might just be one but it's definitely going to count why did i wait this long to do this i'm not really sure i just felt like you know what well i don't like y'all and y'all always lying so why should i vote that was my perspective back then but now that i see that there are so many different things going on in this world i just feel like yeah my little vote will count my my words do matter just like everybody else's you know what i'm saying so yes this is my very first time to be voting i registered two days ago and i'm very proud of myself got my receipts and everything for my registration of voting okay so i'm really excited about voting but there are a lot of different changes and listen i'm all for helping everybody in this world like i'm a very positive person and i try to be i'm not gonna say i am but i try to be and i am but i do try to be better every day but you know what i'm saying and i'm all for helping anyone in need because we all serve a purpose in this world okay but it is unfortunate that there are people in this country that have worked their asses to get here in this country what i mean by that is working to get their citizenship papers working to become an american citizen paying their dues paying money to get green cards and so forth and those things i never knew were well, I did know that you did have to pay for a green card, but I did not know that until working at Fidelis. I, you know, it just wasn't my thing to know. But once I started working for like the state of New York, I realized that these things are what people have to pay for. And it ain't cheap becoming a U.S. citizen. OK, so now because they are allowing all of these migrants to come into the country free of charge illegally without any paperwork, I feel like it's a huge slap in the face to those people that work their ass off to become citizens in the United States. And that's my take on it. Like, I know there are people we can agree to disagree, but there there's a lot going on in Colorado. The Venezuelans have taken over. The gangs have taken over apartment complexes, okay? In New York City, there are Venezuelans beating up people, beating up the police, robbing stores, doing all type of shit. And then there are laws that are in place to protect them. So I just feel like those people that have worked here long and hard to become United States citizens, I feel like now what's going on is a huge slap in the face to those who have worked to become citizens here in the United States. And I don't think it's right. Not only is it not right, but we have have had plenty of homelessness a homeless crisis in america and you guys are not even helping out people that are already living here but you're allowing all of these extra people to come into our country and you have no idea of who they are where they've been and what they up to it's like letting terrorists come into the country and like i said i'm not trying to be a political person because i'm definitely not but i just want to point out what's right is right and what's wrong is wrong now as for the teenagers and their mannerism girl yes like i'm not really sure what's going on with society but i think a lot of it has to do with social 
social media. When I was growing up, we didn't have social media shit. The internet wasn't invented until 1992. Girl, I was 18 then, okay? Pregnant, about to have a baby. So I was not even interested in the internet. But, you know, a lot of things have to do with social media, TV, and music. And it's sad, but, you know, a lot of people will say, why would you blame it on that? It's because it's influential, okay? It is. But we also have to realize that they are parents. People need to be better parents. People need to parent in general. OK, not saying I'm the best mother because there is no best mother. Nobody is perfect in this world. But people do need to learn to parent a little bit better. Keep an eye on your children and be more involved in their daily activities. Now, I do see a lot of young women up here, too. They do have nasty mouths on them. Not saying that I was the perfect teen because I wasn't. But I damn sure wasn't going around talking about sucking. No, you know what? And licking. No, you know what either. OK, but I did have more respect for my elders when we were growing up as teens. When somebody older was around, we would not use bad, vulgar language like straight up. We would watch our tone. We have more respect for those that were older than us back then. But now these young people, they don't give a fuck if they saying the word fuck, cuss, suck, all this dick. They don't they don't care. It's not the same as when we was growing up. And it's probably parenting. Now, mind you, my mother would have knocked my goddamn head off had she heard me speak like that or someone told her I spoke like that. My mother would have knocked me into a coma and bitch, I probably would have woke up today as far as hard as she would have knocked me into a coma. But yeah, things do change and things have definitely evolved in life. I can't say it's for the betterment. I can't say that it's not. But I will say that I just try to keep myself away from a lot of the bullshit. Like I said, I like to watch the drama on the TV, not in person. So I try to minimize my interaction with certain age groups and minimize my interaction in certain stores if I know that there's going to be more people that are very young in age in a certain area then I'm not going to go and involve myself because I don't want to hear that shit and these young girls and these young guys they don't care what they say to you or me at our age if you look at them the wrong way they be ready to take your shit off okay so you have to be mindful where you go you have to minimize certain places and I'm okay with that like look I don't go to the club I'm not a club person anymore I'm 50 years old girl the club is right here okay right here so the things that i do i'm able to minimize all my interactions with certain age groups now it's unfortunate that it has to be that way and it's unfortunate that things have changed so drastically it seemed like to me and like i could be wrong but it seemed like ever since covid hit everybody has been going out of their fucking mind not, not everybody but i see like more more noticeable stuff like it's just out there like people don't care what they put out there people don't care what they say people don't care what they do to other people they don't care they will record it and put it on social media they just don't care and like some women some young girls they just don't have cool they don't have no decorum they're not mindful mindful okay they definitely don't have it and that's probably because a lot of the times the parents are young or they just don't give a shit let one of my daughters go outside acting like that or speaking like that we're gonna have a problem my children know i I was not raised like that myself, so I did not raise them like that. But like I say, the environments have changed, people have changed, and I just feel like sometimes it was brought on by COVID. And now I could be wrong. It could still have been there, but not so put out in the open, so blunt, you know what I'm saying? But now today, people are running in subways, putting feces on other people, like all kind of weird shit, you know what I'm saying? We got gangs from other countries that have been welcomed into this country, and they taking over apartment complexes. Like, it's like really getting wicked out here and evil. And so that's why I be mindful, like when I hear some shit that I don't want to hear when I'm out in public, girl, I walk away from it. Because I'm not about to give you my la my tongue lashing, I'm not about to say nothing to you, because you don't know what people's purposes is, or if they unhinged, or what have you. Now, as for your daughter your daughter-in-law Teresa I don't really think a 10 year old should be listening to any kind of vulgar music there is a time and a place for everything and an age requirement too and like some of these parents feel like oh it's okay we'd be friends we could be friends bitch I don't want to be your friend I'm not your friend okay I'm not your friend I'm your mother now maybe when you are a grown adult and you have your own children we could be friends or we could hang out a little bit more like me and my daughter Tati do but Tati don't use vulgar language around me she doesn't talk like that around me now I don't know how she may talk with her friends but she definitely doesn't talk like that around me nor does my other two children my other two daughters you know they don't talk like that around me but i just feel like you know what i'm saying a lot of it has to do with parenting now mind you the little girl was 10 she did not state what song the little girl was listening to but she did state that the mother was like well you know that's what they listen to just because that's what's being played on the radio stations or what other children may listen to does not make it acceptable and okay for your kid to listen to that like at 10 years old they should not be listening to any type of vulgar music they definitely should not be listening to no sexy red or sookie or whoever else is just vulgar like that cardi b or even meg the stallion or Nicki. 
Nicki Minaj, that's just in my opinion because they too say some bogus shit in their rap lyrics. You know what I'm saying? So that's my opinion. These are kids. Let children be kids. Let a kid be a kid for as long as they can because this world out here is rough and tough and we don't need our children overgrown up, okay? Overgrown up, okay? At their little ripe young ages. Like straight up. The one thing that I don't like to see is children. Like my grandson is nine. He don't listen to that music. Tati will fly his head off. She doesn't allow that. She's very strict with him as well. She monitors his gaming time. She monitors his phone screening time. She monitors what he does in school. She monitors what music he listens to. So yeah, he's nine. And I don't think it's acceptable for any children under a certain age to be listening to anybody say, I'm going to lick their bun hole and all of that shit. It's not cool. And if I was somebody's grandmother and I told that to one of my daughter-in-laws or my son-in-laws, I would have a problem because like I said, they're not going to be listening to that here. And you're going to have to take it just as serious as I do. So yeah, I think you did do a good enough task, Teresa, by speaking to her, but maybe you should speak to your son. It's like, I don't want to say it's snitching, but if you can't get through to one parent and that's your granddaughter and she's young and she's 10 and she shouldn't be listening to these things. And if her mother thinks it's okay, who's to say that your son may think it's okay. He may not be on that same shit where I agree with my wife that it's okay for her to listen to that music. You know, sometimes fathers are a lot more stricter than moms, but I think it should be equal balance. And I really feel like they both should be strict, especially when it comes to monitoring what your children are seeing watching and listening to i really think like it's very beneficial for them these children go to school and they have no respect for adults they have no respect for their teachers and they just act like everything is self-entitled and they should be given things and listen when y'all grow up and y'all are out of school what are y'all gonna do what if the internet went down and there was no internet to google anything y'all probably half of them would probably be like what's a dictionary how do how do i go to the library and look up a book you know what I'm saying? But yeah, things have changed and I greatly agree on that. But I also think like things have changed and we have to change along with the times and we have to become a little bit more stricter with our children, our grandchildren, and vice versa. And a lot of times, you know, like I said, I just keep my way, my, myself away from a lot of shit because all of that vulgar talking and stuff like, yeah, I curse. Okay. I'd be the first one to admit I curse. But the vulgar that I'm hearing is like, girl you sound really nasty times have definitely changed Teresa, and i feel like you should speak to your son about it because if it's making you feel uneasy god knows what else she could be listening to or what else she could be watching and if her mother's okay with it it seems like she's really not monitoring her like that so if the young lady has the phone who knows what's on her phone but sometimes you do need to take these kids phones and go through their history their search history their history y'all see what just happened you know what i'm saying in georgia with this young 14 year old when he went to school but girl yes i'm gonna be voting this year and i'm very excited about it um, and I'm proud of myself, you know what I'm saying? So don't come for me for those who've been voting for years. Just watch, watch your tone because not everything is for everybody. Okay. And if I really didn't know about political status or political details back then, why would I vote? You know what I'm saying? I need to learn things before I do something. I'm not about to just jump out there willy nilly. So please don't come for me if y'all been voting, but be proud that I'm voting this year. And you know what I'm saying? Let me know what your thoughts are of the society of America nowadays. You know what I'm saying? This was a totally different topic, which was great. I really did appreciate these new different topics i love talking about relationships but there are more than that in life you know what i'm saying and audrey i do wish you the best in your journey for your hysterectomy i will definitely be praying for you sweetheart make sure you get you one of those neck fans and as for Teresa have a talk with your son i'm pretty sure it'll be beneficial for your granddaughter especially at her ripe age you know what i'm saying we, they're like sponges you got to get the good stuff in there not the bad but I love you guys. I hope you stay diva and divalicious. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe. If y'all need some Apple Watch Man's girl, girl, make sure you check my website. I love y'all and I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye.